this is the best alarm in the world is guineas. So if you guys want a, uh, a living alarm, get your guineas. Every prepper should have a set of them. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. Guys, if you didn't miss it, last Thursday, April 8th, I was on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I did an episode with Kim and Chloe, and I did a YouTube video to cover it, but YouTube won't let me upload it because of copyright. So it is on my Facebook page. I recommend all of you go to my Facebook page. I'll put a link below and go check it out. It's funny. And I explain why that damn shelter was 104 degrees in there. Well, I'll tell you now, it was out in the freaking desert. It wasn't buried. But anyway, in today's video, I go inspect a seven-year-old Ryzen S bunker. I tell the guy how we're gonna fix it. I tell you how you can fix yours because I know a lot of you guys have bought one and you're probably wondering what you can do about it. And this video is really gonna help you and put your mind at ease that there's something we can do to try to make your Ryzen S tornado shelter into a real fallout shelter because that's all they're doing, guys. They're selling tornado shelters put in that plastic black air system and telling you it's a bomb shelter. Well, that's like me putting stripes on a car and telling you it's a NASCAR. It may look faster, but it don't go no faster. So by just putting an air system in a tornado shelter, it doesn't magically become a follow shelter. It's just a tornado shelter with an air system. But today, I'm gonna to show you how maybe we can help you fix that. The sheds hold about four years. Yeah. And then you had the bunker put in how many years ago? About seven years ago. Seven years ago. All right, well, let's go check it out. Okay. What's that rusted thing? Is that the escape or is that the entrance? Escape. Okay. They, they, they back pretty good. What 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 is all this? This paint that's peeling off. I don't know what that is. Some kind of it's like a plastic almost. So that's their secret escape. It's not very secret, is it? Uh no, I know I know. Well, you know the radiation will come right through that yeah. because you have no shielding. Oh. What's that? The air pipe bringing the air out and the air pipe bringing the air in are together. Did they do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was from the Ryzen as people actually installed that. So over here is the entrance. So this hatch here is doing the same thing. See how the steel has not been blasted? It's just got the, uh, the coat on it. This is why, that's why the paint doesn't stick on the Ryzen S bunkers right there. They have a lifetime warranty. Sir, have they offered to use their lifetime warranty and come in here and fix this? I've never been able to get them to come here and do anything. You haven't been able to get them to come here and do anything. Well, sir, you are no different than everybody else in this country. So their lifetime warranty, how would you rate their lifetime warranty on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> Less than a zero. Less than a zero. You hear that, guys? That's from a... Because you're going to live with it. You do gotta live with the rest of your life. But you know what? Atlas is here now to save the day. What Ryzen S does, they take a tornado shelter, they put an air system in it that they made themselves, and then they tell you it's a bomb shelter. See, you've seen this before. Oh, I've seen this <laughs> every time. Oh, here? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's all the lights that are in here. All right, so these are uh, trailer trailer LED lights. And this is running on DC power inside here. Okay, so you put in a regular light on 110. I got you. Okay, that's nice. Very big shelter, but I would say it's a, it's what, 10 by 14, 15? Yeah. Something like that. So you've got all your food stored in here. And where's your water at? Over there? That's the toilet. There's no water connections down there. There's no water connections. Okay, and then you got a pair of bunk beds. So that's a work in progress. That's the toilet system. There's no shower in this one. Well, this is one of the things I talk about that I do in my shelters is that I have the underfloor storage. So all the water tanks are built inside. So you would have 300 gallons of water under the floor and all the food would be out of sight. That way you have more living space. You could have put a couch in over there. And notice seven foot ceilings that I'm six foot three tall. Hold on. You see if I could catch myself between me and the roof. That's all there is right there. So this is what they call their bulletproof door, huh? Um, that is just, it's a piece of quarter inch metal on a piece of inch and a half square tubing. And then the lock is, this is the locking mechanism. And then they put on a couple bolts like this. So if somebody tries to kick in the door, and sometimes they put in a little window here. Yeah. With a, you can fold that up, and that way you can see who shoots you. <laughs> okay. 
Now, if that was made out of 3 Ace AR 500, it would be bulletproof. One more thing. Yeah. If I set a ball right here on this floor without yeah. these rugs in here, it would, walk, it would roll down to that corner. Well, then the shelter settled. No, they just put it in that way. They just put it in crooked? The, uh, oh, is that why you have it propped up over there? Yeah, this end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The backhoe that they used yeah. wouldn't handle the lifting of the shelter. They had to drag it over here. So they just threw it in the hole and put it in crooked. So does the air system run? Go ahead and turn it on. Okay, I want to show you how much this blows. It barely blows out. This thing doesn't weigh nothing. It should be standing up. That's how weak that air system is right there. It's a joke. And that's your NBC air filtration system and it's running. See how quiet it is? It's all the sound it makes. And they charge $7,500 for that thing. That's a thousand more than I charge for a real Swiss air system with a manual crank. So if you lose your power, you have no way to operate that thing, do you? No. I'd want a hand crank one. Well, the ones I do are very quiet, they're electric, but here's the Ryzen S logo. S for Ryzen S and the three crosses. Now that probably represents the three people who died now in the bunker that blew up, sadly. It's a joke, but it's not really. I mean, for a little shelter, it's, I mean, it's cozy as clay. Um, it's, just, it's just not an atlas. All right, so looking at the stairs, they use some, uh, just some purloin, metal building purloin for the steps. That's just paper thin, that's less than 16 gauge. Um, Atlas uses one eighth diamond plate treads like you see right here. They're heavy duty, they're industrial. Okay, so you've got a lead acid battery and that you got one battery? Yes. And that's the battery they gave you? Yes. So they get put a lead acid battery inside the living quarters of a bunker. Lead acid batteries can off gas. Right there, AGM, aggravated glass mat battery. They, yeah, that's a lead acid battery. See the uh, little white already picking up there? So you got one battery to drive down there and then the solar panels, I bet you got one solar panel up there, don't you? Yeah. One? One, yeah. Have you checked it, make sure it's still working? Oh yeah, it worked. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So one solar panel isn't enough to keep up with that running full time to run the air system and keep the lights on. You would need probably 10 solar panels. It's just not enough. It's enough to come down here for maybe 24 hours and run it on that. What kind of batteries do you use? Uh, now everyone uses lithium. lithium okay. Now this is a composting toilet. Yeah. And then they have, this is the vent tube. It's an inch and a quarter pipe that has to run to the surface. So that's correct. Yep. This is how the toilet works, guys, in a bunker. You poop. This opens up. After you poop, there's a crank handle over here. It stirs up the peat moss or the coconut husk with your waste, mixes it up so it will compose. Then the PP holes are those right there. And that goes down to your PP bottle. And then you can it, dump it and put a lid on it. This is the air out valve. Air comes in supposedly over here, comes out over there. In a shelter, to have proper airflow, you should have one on one side and one on the other side, caddy corner, or straight across. That way, the airflow travels over the entire bunker. So you got the CO2 coming out and the air coming in. They could at least turn this 90 the other way, or one over there and one over here turned it so that right there makes a big difference. You see what I did? Yeah. Okay, so now the CO2 is coming out over here. It will dissipate by the time the air is being brought in. But to have them the way they were, and they do it on every bunker, that's just stupid. All right, so the gentleman's asking me a question. What can I do about this staircase that's so steep that's not gonna attenuate gamma radiation? This is a entrance to a tornado shelter that's been sold as a fallout shelter. Well. If you had a longer mud room, more travel, or if you came down and made a right-hand turn, that would be the proper way to do it. The only thing he has on is, the advantage he has is he has a high ceiling in this barn that if the gamma lands on the ceiling of the barn, time and distance will cause it to decay. So the fact that this barn's about 12 feet tall, gamma will be on the roof up here, okay? 
Um, and then you're inside and you have three foot of earth between you and the surface because it looks like it's about three feet deep. That's your chance to shield you from the gamma. The stairs can be steep, but you got to have a long mud room to get to, uh, otherwise the gamma just comes straight down in here. So does, the, does your uh, hatch on, or the door on top of this? The, uh, yeah. the metal doesn't help any because the gamma will go right through the metal. The only thing that stops gamma is two foot of concrete, three foot of earth or greater, uh, six foot of water or four inches of lead, 12 inches of steel or 110 inches of wood. That's what will shield you from gamma radiation. The rising us, they're pretty hard headed. They'll tell you that this shelter is better than mine. They'll tell you that that air system's better than mine. They'll tell you that the seven foot ceilings are better than mine. They'll tell you that this escape tunnel that goes straight out to the surface that opens out is better than mine. They'll tell you everything is better than mine, but they don't know they're asking from a hole in the ground. They're idiots. I'm sorry to say, just flat out idiots. All right, guys, this is the way you can fix the escape hatch from rising S bunker. So you have some shielding. So it's three feet down. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to weld a square plate on the inside with a six inch nipple welded in the middle of the plate that will have um, a plug in the middle of it. Then after that's welded in and the plug is in, you can fill this full of sand. So if you ever have to escape, that way you'll have the shielding from the gamma radiation. So if you ever have to get out, you actually would dump all the sand inside the bunker there. You would climb up the ladder and then just open this hatch. Of course, this hatch is not clandestine or secret or in any way, but if somebody did find it and they opened it up, they would find three foot of sand there too to protect you as well. So they're gonna give up on that unless they wanna just dig forever. But uh, if somebody has the means and the tools and the time, they can usually get into a bunker. The best thing is to just keep it hidden as far as your air pipes go over here, what I would suggest you do is put a trash can over them, okay? Take the hole out of a trash can, put the trash can over the pipes, then fill the trash can full of trash, like papers and stuff. Then it looks like, or with something, that way it looks like a trash can or put a barrel actually on the outside. If you wanna protect the air pipes, what I normally do on the outside, we put a 55 gallon drum on top or something like a barrel full of holes mm -hmm. so the air will go through. And then they just see an old barrel. They don't see air pipes because those air pipes apparently go to something. Of course, I'm gonna use this video to show other people what they can do to okay. fix their rise and S bunkers as well. Now the stairs is a problem. If you're in a shed like this, that's a good thing because if the gamma lands on the building in 24 hours, 90% of it will decay. And because there's three foot of earth between the roof and there, which is the bare minimum, you'll have enough earth and concrete because you have concrete here too. That will shield you from the gamma through the roof. But an engineer from uh, University of Tennessee, which is their Oak Ridge Laboratories in Tennessee, came down and did the engineering on the rising S bunkers with these stairs this way. And he calculated at 479 Rankins the human body can handle 25 Rankins in a day. So this shelter technically, the way it's designed, if it was exterior, is bringing in almost 20 times the lethal amount of radiation, which means you shouldn't even be in the shelter. You might as well be outside almost, but of course you're gonna go in the shelter. But you would have to go to the central strongest point in the middle and uh, shield yourself from the gamma. And you, of course you're gonna have detectors inside. As far as this hatch goes, so it's a cheap little hydraulic piston as they put on every hatch. They're typically, this is a tornado shelter hatch. So it's got this little handle on it and the paint's all falling off this, but. Um, it doesn't help open it, all it does is keep from slamming down on it. Well, yeah, but it's, that's like a $10 hydraulic hatch. The ones we use at Atlas are like 120. And they're heavy duty. Yeah. But my hatches are made out of 3 ace AR500. The only thing I can do is change that lid to a, a bulletproof lid, fill the box full of sand, change the air system, okay? Change the air system out to a Swiss air system with a manual crank, power, this electric and manual. We'll pull this thing out of here. Now, my air pipes, that's a four inch. Rising S only has a four inch air intake pipe. Atlases usually have a six inch or larger, six to eight inch. So it's gonna be straining, but because it's only pulling from three feet, it will be okay, all right? So we're gonna cut this put a flange on it, do an adapter, 
for the uh, Swiss air system. And we'll have to do the same thing over here for the overpressure blast valve. His escape tunnel will have a nipple right here and that will be full of sand up to there. All right. The door is going to have to stay because I can't put a gas tight door on here because there's no room on the outside. I can't do anything about the stairs. And as far as the hatch goes, all I can do is make him a brand new lid. So one thing he'd like for me to do too is add a hydraulic, a good hydraulic lift to this and get rid of that rising S plastic thing that they put on their 50, 60,000, 70,000 dollar shelter here. That's, that's the same kind they use on uh, a toolbox. Campers. Yeah, but that thing only costs about $10 right there. So the good news is he's not going to spend as much money as, he, as he's planning on, but I'm going to do the best I can with this. So guys, if you have a Ryzen S bunker yourself and you want me to do this for you as well, you can buy the parts from me, have a local welder do it, and, and try to get up to an Atlas standard best you can. That's all I suggest. But those air systems, I don't think they're worth their weight in plastic. They're just, they're just not strong, and there's no way to manually operate them. So guys... Be glad to help you. Call me at one 4 bunker and uh, I will be glad to help you modify your Ryzen S bunker into something that's more like an Atlas shelter. But keep in mind, I can't add any underfloor storage. I've had lead acid batteries in a shelter that are AGM. And that's not smart to have lead acid batteries inside a bunker because they can off gas, but that one apparently is not doing too bad. But there's only one battery one battery to run this bunker. So let's say the solar panel's gone. How long will that battery run the shelter with this air system, these lights, and whatever else is going on here? That's all they left them with was one battery and one or two solar panels, and that's it to survive on. The bomb shelter. <laughs> well, the tornado shelter. Guys, well, thanks for watching today's episode. Hey, listen, in every episode, I give away one of these gun wall hangers. All you gotta do is put a comment below between one and a thousand, and in today's $100 bonus, I want you to tell me what the S in Rising S stands for. He who comes up with the best answer, if they win the number, they win the $100, okay? And I guarantee this is probably going to be a good winner today. So guys, as always, I love you. I'll see you in the next episode.